Well, good afternoon, everybody. Mark Finding here in the Home Weather Office on this Sunday afternoon. It is Sunday, the 17th day of November 2024. I did want to do a special weather briefing for you because we do have the potential for an active week for parts of California and parts of the Western states. And I'm seeing all sorts of headlines starting to be floating around on social media. Things like atmospheric river, uh, things like bomb cyclone, things like flooding. So I just wanted to take a few minutes to explain so you just have a better idea of what's behind some of the headlines that you're seeing and how the models are trending and what it is we can expect through this week. And it's looking as though, especially the Northern California areas, let's say from, from Turlock to Chico and Redding, uh, those areas are gonna see a wide range of outcomes as we go through this week. So let's just start with the old atmospheric river and, and what does that mean and how does that uh, impact our weather? For those of you that have been around for a while, you've known that we I like to show this uh, precipitable water. And also, atmospheric river, yeah, think Pineapple Express, one of those sorts of things. These are the situations where we get our best rain, our, our most concentrated areas of rain. You get rain that continues for 24, 36, 48 hours or more. As instead of just kind of getting an hour or two of rain from a passing cold front. So this is the precipital water is being shown on the 18Z GFS on this Sunday afternoon. And as we get into the day on Wednesday, you can see this highly concentrated area of moisture right in here, kind of aimed at Northern California, especially I-80 to the north. There's a low wrapped up here to the north. And so that's Wednesday morning. As we go through the day Wednesday, it stays aimed at the area. Get into the day Thursday, it stays concentrated in the same area. So where it rains, it rains almost nonstop. For like I said, maybe 48 hours or more. This is getting into Thursday night, and this is getting to the day Friday, and then it kind of sinks to the south and goes away. But this has the potential to bring excessive rain to areas along the north coast of California. But as we often see in these atmospheric river events, areas get a lot of rain, but not all that far away, geographically speaking, we can get no rain at all. One of the other things that we like to keep an eye on is just how the uh, the models are trending. So there's a cool tool here on the COD page. And what I can do is look at the last few runs here of the GFS and see where this atmospheric river is pointed. So this is the most recent run and I've stopped it here. This is zero Z on Thursday. So this is Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. So we're just gonna take a snapshot of how the model is trending this at one particular point in time. So again, this is 4 p.m. on Wednesday. And every frame that I'm gonna show you here is 4 p.m. on Wednesday. So as you can see, the area of high concentration of moisture is aimed right at I-80 to the north. All right, let's go back a run. This is the 12Z run. Doesn't look much different. The 6Z run, also not that much different. The 0Z run was a little bit farther to the north. So this is going back in six hour increments Again, all showing 4 p.m. on Wednesday. And if, as I go back in time, you can see that earlier runs, especially this run, was showing that area of moisture much farther to the north. And so now as I play it forward, and this will show you the forward progression of the models, you can see that the trend is moving south. And again, this isn't, this isn't a time sequence. This is just all the same time um, at 4 p.m. on Wednesday, how the GFS has been handling it. So as you can see, the trend is to take this farther south. And what that means is less rain for Southern Oregon, more rain for Northern California. Let's go to the NAM, because this, uh, this is starting to get into the range of the NAM. And this is the 18Z NAM. And as we go through the day, next couple of days, we'll see some sun and clouds, but no big deal. Let's get into, this is Tuesday night. Start, starting to have a pretty good uh, pressure gradient here up on the north coast as a deepening low begins to uh, pop up to well to the north and that will increase the winds up to the north and even in the Sacramento Valley we'll start to see some, some winds. There will be some colder air trapped ahead of this thing but the general trend is going to be for warming as this thing comes in and that means that the snow levels while they may start relatively low will actually be going up. All right I'm going to stop it at 
eight o'clock Wednesday morning. We have rain in Lake County. We have rain down into Marin County, but you'll notice from San Francisco to the south, nothing. This model shows nothing from Sacramento to the south and certainly nothing from El Dorado County to the south. And to the north, however, with some of that cold air trapped around, there is some snow, but gradually that will get mixed out as warmer air moves in. This is 4 p.m. on Wednesday. And again, this is just one model's depiction of it. But as you can see, let's just kind of draw a line along Interstate 80. I-80 to the north, getting rain, and perhaps a lot of rain. And to the south, no rain. So Stockton, Modesto, Sonora, Groveland, all saying, rain? What rain? And then the end of this, this model goes out to uh, late Wednesday night. And again, it's still raining. Let me back that up and just kind of take you through. And you can see just that persistent rain concentrated on the north coast. And the result of that, this is the, the total precip accumulation as we uh, just go through late Wednesday night. And again, the rain's going to continue beyond that. Look at these spots that I highlight here. Seven to eight inches of rain here. And even in the valley, Chico is pushing close to three inches of rain, while well, Sacramento has a trace of rain and there's no rain in Stockton or Modesto. There's been some light rain on the west slope, but that's about it. We could see a lot of rain if this turns out to be true into the Feather River Basin. Good news there is that there's plenty of room in Lake Oroville to take in whatever falls here, as well as into uh, uh, Lake Shasta. But again, look at just that, that tight gradient of getting a lot of rain to no rain. So for those of you, let's say in Live Oak, you might see a lot of rain. In Marysville, south of the Buttes, maybe not much rain at all. But where does that line really gonna end up? Well, that's the tricky part of the forecast. And again, that's through Wednesday. All right, let's go ahead to the GFS version because the GFS will be able to take us farther out in time because the, the, the NAM only goes through Wednesday night right now. This is showing more or less the same solution that you see persistent rain here on the north coast. This is up to Thursday night. Let's get into Friday. That's Friday morning at 8 o'clock. And then this is finally Friday afternoon as that line begins to fall apart and sink to the south. Then areas like Sacramento and El Dorado County and Point South start to see more in the way of rain. Now, I, I do know that uh, Friday is going to be a big getaway day for the Thanksgiving weekend. And while this model is showing some snow, at right now, right now, it just looks as though the snow levels might be relatively high. Also saw that Palisades, I believe, is gonna open on Friday. So we'll see how that goes. It may be a rainy day with snow, let's say above 7,000 feet, and then it clears out somewhat over the weekend. But yeah, we'll see how that all plays out. So we'll see how this goes over the next couple of days with the amount of rain. Let me see what the GFS is going to go do with this. So let me just shift this down just a little bit. Total precip accumulation through the day on Friday uh, from the GFS. Friday afternoon, it shows a 1.2 in Sacramento. Uh, these areas up here, 15, 16 inches of rain. But once again, this is a classic atmospheric river sort of pattern where you do see one area, a wide area that sees a lot of rain, but not all that far away, you get very little rain. So that's the, that's the atmospheric river the, um, that you're probably gonna be hearing a lot about throughout the weekend, uh, throughout the week rather, and, and what it can do. And there is the potential that we could see the rivers on the North Coast rise, but we're also in the best part of the time of year where the ground will take up a lot of this. And then what we'll see is some good runoff, but the rivers up North should be able to handle that a lot better than we could, let's say in, um, in January or February after we've already had a lot of rain. But in areas like Sacramento and to the south, with this current solution of the best rain being north of Interstate 80, I don't anticipate we'd see any issues on things like the Cosumnes River. So uh, for those of you that uh, worry about AR events on the Cosumnes River in Sacramento County, Deer Creek, those areas, it doesn't look as though the Sacramento County area, Placer County, El Dorado County, Amador County will see enough rain to really cause any issues. But we'll have to keep an eye on that just to see how far south that line decides to nudge. But all the indications now are going north of I-80. All right, the other thing I saw pop up on uh, social media that started getting trending was uh, a, a bomb cyclone. Yeah, all right, let's talk about the bomb cyclone. Let's go back to the GFS. And what I'm gonna, uh, a bomb cyclone. Um, I know it sounds sexy. It's, <laughs> it certainly gets a lot of attention. We used to talk about them a lot more on the East Coast. 
nor'easters are born of bomb cyclones. And what they mean is, um, it, it, the term that we used to use was uh, a low that go, undergoes explosive deepening. And the trend is for, the, the classification for that is 24 millibars of deepening in, within 24 hours. And we'll certainly see that with this low. We see it in the Pacific quite often. And this uh, deepening low is not really going to impact California very much. But so if you start hearing about bomb cyclone, here's what it is. So watch this area right in here, a lot of energy right here and as as we go through the low develops right in here and this is on um, Monday night and it has a central pressure somewhere around 999 millibars right around a thousand millibars but just watch this little area right here and as we go through the next 24 hours the low really begins to deepen and by the time we get into Tuesday afternoon now the central pressure on that low is down around 960 millibars so we've seen a 40 millibar drop within 24 hours and that continues to deepen even more but the important thing for California is where this thing is I mean, you know, it's it's up off the coast of Washington. Um, so in terms of the, the biggest thing with bomb cyclones or very fast deepening lows is that uh, you get a lot of wind with them. And we certainly could see that up on the northern coast. Uh, and by that, I mean the northwest coast. Washington and Oregon could see a lot of wind as well as you get pretty big surf out of that as well. Uh, because of the wind that goes with it and the rapid rapid deepening. But if you start hearing things or seeing things about a bomb cyclone, well, that's that's what it is. It's going to be a big low, but there's a big difference between having a low up here and having a low down here because here's California. If the low's down here, yeah, our winds are howling. Up here, we're going to have the typical southeasterly winds that we often see. And right now, I don't see excessive wind in our area because of that deepening low. So there you go. There's your Sunday afternoon uh, briefing. Um, and so what you can expect this week is Monday and Tuesday will, will be uh, dry. Some areas will start to see the rain develop on Tuesday night into the day on Wednesday. And the Wednesday, Thursday look very wet in areas north of Interstate 80, south of I-80, probably not much in the way of rain at all on Wednesday and Thursday. And then everybody should see a little bit of rain on Friday. So a lot for us to keep up with as we go through this work week. I'll have another update first thing tomorrow morning. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I'll talk with you later.